All right, so um, what we are going to do today, we are going to um, talk about type safe safety in a, in a, uh, in more uh, in a kind of which is more close up. We want to see um, uh, how type safety in C++ uh, is enforced. Of course, it's C++. Nothing is enforced. You, you can always shoot yourself in the foot if you want to. But, but they provide you the safeties if you are willing to use it. Um, so by the end of the session, we're going we're gonna to learn today uh, how to use constraint casts to tell to C++ how we want to convert types. And then if what we intend to do is not what we are doing, we're going to either get warnings or complete prevention of compilation, compilation error. Okay, but as soon as the warnings go away, go goes away. As uh, if you are using those things, then everything is fine. So, as usual, we're going to start with uh, going through the things we've talked about before. We're going to uh, start from the beginning and uh, that from the beginning of the last last uh, week. So, uh, we talked about overloading. Good morning. We talked about overloading, um, and uh, we said whenever we have specific type of uh, functions um, that. Uh, uh, the functions that you are writing have identical uh, logic. What you do is uh, you take a look at the logic that you have and you extract the logic and put it inside a template so the compiler actually says, okay, you don't need to write the function for me anymore. Uh, if I see you are using that type of function, recognizing from the signature that you're, you are using, I will generate the function for you at compile time. Two benefits for this. Number one, uh, you don't write code. You just write, you just tell, it, give instructions to the compiler how to take care of your code. Number two, your executable is not large because you only generate the functions on demand. And that's a beautiful thing. So after doing that, we found out that sometimes to, for a function to be able to do the same thing in different ways, you need to actually change the logic, which means for all the things that we have for the first scenario that we had, this logic works, but for certain types, the logic is absolutely different. And for that, we need a specialized type of thing. We found out that if you just overload it, you're fine. Your code works. But you know, but it works is against my religion. We don't do that. But it works is always doom of your application because it, all the other people's code is going to work faster than you don't want that. We want efficiency. For that, we do specialization, which essentially is creating a, a, another template that is only used if the function is called in a special way. That's why we call it specialization. Therefore, we write our new logic, and the new logic that is actually, actually applied, it, that logic is actually applied only when your function is actually created, uh, is, is invoked for that type, which is beautiful. We, we also found out that you can enforce compiler to create a specific type of version of the function for you by adding the signature of the template to the function itself. Therefore, if you have mixed types and you know the compiler is going to get confused, I don't know if I'm going to do this display sum with an integer or a double. What do I do? You can enforce the compiler to create the version of the thing that you want and add the signature to the function template. Later, we use that one for classes because classes, ha they have no signature. All we can do is to enforce. Okay? So that's that. So that was specialization. And we also mentioned, uh, I, I talked about it already, that if you overload, uh, it's going to always overload supersede uh, templates. So if you overload something, but it's not efficient, we talked about it. So that's that. That's what we talked about last time. And then we ended everything with going 
into class saying, where is that simple thing? There you go. Saying that we can actually, remember the position? So we can actually create uh, a template for a class. So essentially have a class Cre uh, get created using uh, the compiler's capability. So that essentially, we're going to have a, a, uh, a template. With, we, we gave that example about possession, and we said that uh, e uh, we can create a structure that shows it keeps track of the position of an individual. And that position, we don't know what it is. Could be a notebook, could be coffee, could be hat, could be glasses, anything. Because the type that we have over here is different, I need to create the class position to be flexible with the type. Therefore, we created a template for it. But the problem with the class is that class doesn't have signature. It is impossible for the compiler to see how it wants to create the class. Therefore, you must supply the signature of the template when you are creating a class. So if your position is a laptop, you're creating a laptop possession my laptop, or if you're, 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 you're having a number that you want to know, that you, your position is an integer and it's a number that you have. Are we good? That's the end of OOP244 when it comes to class templates. But then, after that, what we did, we said, let's actually have a quick preview of OOP345. So for that, we did a quick review of dynamic memory allocation and all the good stuff, and we create a, the, a double array, and a, a double dynamic double array, with, with, which actually replaces the, uh, the double arrays that we are using in, in, uh, in uh, uh, C++, and we converted that thing to, uh, to a template. So essentially, uh, we created a real template for an array that can replace any array that you have in C, type safety. What's the problem with arrays in C? It doesn't know what the size is. It doesn't enforce any uh, limitation of where you can go uh, uh, in, the, in the array. If you exceed the, the index, it's going to crash because you're go going off boundaries. You can take care of all those things. So you can create a safe array for yourself. Not only that, you can make it a smart array. So when it actually, uh, uh, when, it's actu when the index actually exceeds its size, it can resize itself and adjust to the size that you have. And we created this. Actually, I took the liberty to actually implement the, the copy construction and the, and the, the, the assignment operator over, the, over here. So at the, at the time, we set it to delete. So I actually implemented those two. Uh, so this is something that is added. Please go check it out. Uh, I had a boo-boo that we did, not, we did not cover last time. We did not check last time. Uh, and the boo-boo that I had was that for the constructor, I've forgotten, I've forgotten to add the type. Now it's there. Okay. So the copy construction and copy assignment is implemented too, if you want to see. But we talked about how, uh, as uh, a rookie, we, we create templates in, in C, C++. How do we do it? We first create the class that we have with the general type. After everything's done and works fine and dandy, everything is good, then we convert it to templates, which is essentially take, uh, adding a signature of a template to every single scope that we have. Before that, what do we do? What is the difference between a template module and a, and a regular module? Everything is in a header file. Why is that? Because the compiler needs to know everything to be able to regenerate the code. If you make it a module and you put the header, uh, only the, the definitions in a header file and you put everything else in a CPP file, compiler at compile time only have access to the header file and therefore it cannot generate the code. Therefore, templates need all the stuff in the header file. Beautiful. We've done that and we remember that the, the, the template tag that you're adding to the beginning of the of the class that you want to convert it to uh, a, a generalized type of thing would need to be added to every single scope that you have. So every scope that you have will add it, will be added. So this is the copy constructor that I didn't create, and I didn't create it like an OP244 student. This is how you, uh, what's the, what, what is the code that you see if you actually look at somebody who's programmed for 
many years. Okay, so uh, the copy construction happens over here, right at the initialization area. I'm actually uh, initializing the data right over there. I'm doing the dynamic memory allocation and setting it to it right over there. I'm doing the size, and I'm just doing a quick loop over there to uh, copy all the information. The same thing in the in the in the assignment operator. So the lazy thing that we always do, and we call the operator equal and the uh, uh, copy construction. I'm not a very much fan of that. It's better to actually write each logic by itself. Questions? For that, you need to take precautions because an assignment operator is only invoked when the left hand one already exists. Therefore, you need to make sure that you deallocate the stuff. Lots of extra processes have to happen where, when you don't need it in a copy construction. In a copy construction, you have the object already. Uh, you have a brand new object that doesn't have anything in it. So you don't need to do all the, the extra processes that you have to do. All that little if statements and those function calls, and they, 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 use, they use time. And when your object is supposed to get assigned or copied five million times, that's when your program is going to slow down and the other people's program is going to speed up. It is always better to look at your code. So you, you write in many different stages. First you, pro first, you program. You compile your code, and you get rid of all the syntax error, and everything works. And then, then you create a beta version, and everything goes fine. It works. You test it for months and months, and everything's fantastic. You give it to the client. Okay. Then, because you, were, you had to do this, you had to stick to it, right? And then, after you've done that, you set the code, and you step back after three weeks. Because you forget what you have done now, you can actually criticize your own code. Then you go and you make it efficient, and you create version 1.1, OK? All right, so, and that's what we have done. So, and now if you, can, if you look at my main over here, the print array of mine is no longer receiving uh, a constant reference. So the print array over here is actually receiving an, uh, an object by value, therefore copy construction. So when I'm actually printing it, it's actually copying it now. And just to make sure that the, the assignment is working properly, I created a, an array of 100 uh, elements over here of integer. And I'm setting that one to the other one, so just to test and see if everything works. And it works properly, and everything's fine and dandy. And if I, oh, if I rebuild it, and run it, it works perfectly. But there was something over here that I ignored. And here comes the topic for today, type safety. I have to rebuild it, because it's a warning. It just goes away. So rebuild. So what's happening? Oh. <laughs> so what's happening here? See all these warnings? Conversion from size T to type possible loss of data, then it explains over here that's when you are actually setting the type. Uh, by the way, this is how you get your warnings and things about templates. Because templates, they don't exist, right? It, there's no code to go over there and tell you which part of the thing is wrong. So it shows you that the template that you created with this type being equal to integer, this is happening with it. If I dig it a little closer and I go to the code which says, PRG.CPP2717. So if I go PRG.CPP27.17, look. I is an array of integers. I am setting it to I plus 10. What is that? So, sorry, capital I. Okay, I the array, okay, is set to I the size T plus 10. From IPC144, when you have two different types, and you do uh, an operation between the two, what type of polymorphism happens? Coercion, right? Coercion happens, so it casts it so it can make it work. And it always casts to the 
bigger size. If you have a double and an int, double happens, right? If it, here, size t is an unsigned integer, therefore bigger. T 10 is a, is a regular integer. So the outcome of this coercion cast over here is essentially a size t. Now you are saying, put something big in that small integer. You have a big cup of coffee, you're putting in a small one. Compiler doesn't know that that cup is half, copy is half full and you're not going to have a spill. So it warns you, hey, if the copy cup that you have is full, you're going to have a spill. Careful. Good morning. Right? Okay, so because of that, it's giving us a warning. How can I actually fix that? Here comes constraint cast. When we are dealing with C language, we could cast it, right? So I can write now over here, say, I want to cast this size t thingy to an integer. So the compiler knows that we are casting. The problem is that that cast can have ha happen in many different ways. The common cast that you have done, which is essentially the types that are similar to each other, and you want to convert one to another, the thing that are related to each other, like an integer and a double, they're both primitive values. These type of things are most common type of casts. So the compiler says, if you want to do that type of cast, use what we call a, a static cast. And what does the static cast do? So, the, so if I wanted to actually cast this in C++ format, not C, I would put one integer and put it in braces, right? So I, could, I, I would say over here, integer, and I would do it like this. Let me make it bigger so we can actually see what I'm doing. So this is how I cast that integer. What does it do in C++ terminology? It creates a temporary nameless int out of that i and uses that one. Therefore, you have an integer and hopefully no warnings. But we don't want that. I want to make sure that this thing that is happening is actually a conversion between relative types. I'm not changing a... a um, um, I don't know, a, a cell phone to a computer. They're two different, actually, they're, it could be the same thing. Cell phone is a computer. Uh, a coffee to a cell phone. I, I'm, not, I'm not casting that. Hello. All right. So, are you out from a war if like to something <laughs> fight out there? All right. Everything's good? All right. So, For your information, okay. we are trying to cast a size d to an int, and we said using C++ syntax, we are doing that. We're going to say create a temporary nameless int out of that one. Compiler says in a new C++, if you want to do that, let me know that's the version of the cast that you are doing by actually writing over here instead of that, writing over here static cast and then mention that that's integer. So essentially, by writing static cast int, you are telling to the compiler, I am converting a size t to an integer. And if what you are doing is not exactly what you ask, you either get a warning or, stop, or it stops you. Uh, and it won't let you to, to compile. So if I run this, you will see that now the compiler says, no problem, you have done everything perfectly, and you cast you did your cast in a proper way. We good about that? First type of cast, okay? Second one. Let's say for some reason I want to print the address of these objects that I created. So I want to create, print the address of i after I do that, print address of J to make sure they're not copies. They are actually, they are not identical things. They are separate. I just want to do that. So if I write, run this beautiful program of mine, three years later when it compiles, you will see that, ooh, this happened. What is that? It's hexadecimal, right? I want to, I want to understand that. I want decimal values to come out, like base 10, right? So what do I do? I'll, I'll put my, I put my, uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, uh, C hat on, and I'm going to say, I'm going to convert that to an unsigned integer. And how do you do that? You're saying unsigned, and you put it over here, address of, this intelligence thing, he kills me. 
Okay. Unsigned. And you compile and run it. <clears throat> you still are getting a bunch of warnings over here telling you what the heck you're doing. Uh, you're trying to convert uh, an integer pointer into address to an unsigned end. Are you sure? And the value that is coming out, out uh, may be truncated. So it's going to tell you that, hey, what, that what you're doing is um, you are actually trunk, truncate, you are truncating the address because the address is an 8-byte thing. And you, we are putting it in unsigned integers for, again, that coffee thingy happens, which actually happens in here. So if I want to do that, if I want to actually convert an address to an unsigned integer so I can see the number, first of all, let's take a look at the number. You see what it is? That means my computer has only this much memory, which is much lower than what I actually have. So what happens in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to use constraint cast over here. But because these two things are not the same thing, I have to reinterpret the whole thing. I have to ask the compiler to reinterpret that address into an integer. They are not relative types anymore. They are completely different things. So what I do in here, instead of doing that, I'm going to say reinterpret cast and to an unsigned like that and cast it that way. So now when I run the program, you will see that I still get it, I'm getting the compilation, uh, the, the, uh, the thing that is being truncated. Oh, so probably unsigned is not big enough value to put it in here, right? So let's make it bigger. Run again. Still it's not big enough, the value, right? So let's make it even bigger. Don't worry, that's the last long. I'm not going to log long, 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 long. <laughs> so when we got to go like that, now the warnings go away, and that's the actual address that I have. So whenever you have things that are not related, but you know it will work, you put reinterpret cast. If these two things, now if, if you want to cast a double to an integer, compiler will give you an error. Tell you, hey, you told me to change the type of these two and completely try to figure out what the values are. But they are not. They are, they are related. So it actually stops you. And if you do it the other way, you try to do static cast for a pointer, it's going to fail. That's what it does. So using that tool, you will clarify your intention for the compiler. And compiler tells you is if what you are doing is actually what you want it to do. We good? OK, now we're going to go to more uh, crazy stuff. So down to this point, I could use the, my little thingy that I had. But for the other ones, I can't. So I'm going to save this one over here. I'm going to go, oh, uh, so uh, in here, I'm going to call it B uh, static and uh, reinterpret cast. CPP. So that's that one. Now I'm going to bring it up and show you something completely new that, that's going to explain what are the other ones. So let's say, so let's say I have an interface. Let's say I have an interface and that interface of mine is to make an object printable. So uh, by the way, what's wrong with my interface? There's no destructor, right? There's no destructor. So, so let's add that one. So in here, I'm going to say uh, virtual uh, printable. And I'm going to say equal to default to all those people who actually create an empty thing. For all those th people who actually create an empty 
destructor don't write equal to default. It means you're telling to the compiler, I don't want to do anything. I just want the virtuality here. And you do that, so it's fine. So now this is an, a printable class, right? And now let's assume I want to create a, a class. I call that class a password. And a password is a printable thing that you can print. But it's a sensitive thing. So because it's sensitive, when I'm printing, so essentially if I, if I uh, uh, create my concrete class out of that uh, uh, interface. I'm saying password is a printable object and it has the password maximum 16 characters. But I need to know how many times you're printing this. Because it's a sensitive thing, I can't just let you print it. Maybe I want to limit two times or three times of printing it. Whatever, I just came up with something too. Okay? And I want to see what the dilemma, I want to show you what the problem is in here. By definition, if this is printable, it is supposed to have a print method that is constant, which means it should not change the owner, correct? But I want to add to, to the value of number of prints when I'm printing it. How can I do that? It's a read-only method. How can I make a query become partially modifiable? No, you don't. First of all, you get rid of the const. It's not <coughs> implementing your printable anymore. So it it's not a concrete class anymore. It becomes a virtual class because you did not. So you have to do that. <laughs> There's no way. OK? So what we need to do, again, because we have the tools to shoot ourselves in the foot, we have to explain to the compiler, hey, I know this is query, but for this part, I want to be able to change my uh, read only object. What do you do? You play a trick over here. You say, okay, I'm going to create a pointer of type size t because size t is the number of prints over there that I have, right? So size t pointer number of prints. And I'm going to set that one to address of m number of prints. And then I'm going to add to the value of that pointer instead which essentially holds the address. But the problem is that it's telling you, telling you, hey, you have a, a, a constant address, and you're putting it into a read-write address. Can't do that. That's when you say, I want you to remove that constantness for me. How do you do that? You say, I want this to be a const cast into a size t pointer, and then you do like that. So you remove the constantness out of that address only for this. Therefore, you can change it. That is one of the things that is beautiful about constrained casts. You tell to the compiler what you want to do, and then you're allowed to, you know, they say, to break the rules, first you have to become a professional in that thing so you know what you're doing. To go fast, you have to first know how to drive a Formula One car. You cannot drive with your Ford Festiva 150 kilometers an hour, right? So that's the thing. You have to learn how to do it. This is how we do it. You tell it's constant, but remove the constant this out of that part so I can do it. Now I can actually have number of prints over there. And uh, when I keep printing that thing, over and over, I can actually see how many times it's printed. And you run it, you'll see magically it works. So it says the password was printed 10 times. Yes? Mm -hmm. No, no, it doesn't work. It, no, 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 you can't. Const cast, thank you. Constant only removes. Why you want to make something constant when something, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> usually you don't do that. Like it, yeah, it doesn't make sense. If you want to make something constant, just make the method constant. And the, so constant cast only removes the constantness. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, okay. 
So that's const cast. Oh, why do I have two bees over here? This is this is actually a C. So this is, and last but not least, is the one that she's gonna make you kind of scratch your it's a little. Is that a question? Oh, you're looking for a power outlet? No, okay. Laptops are distraction. Go there and see. All the all the all the A students of mine, they have a notebook and a pen. Okay? All right? Don't use your laptops. You have one language processor. Remember? Not two. And human beings, absolute BS. We don't do parallel processing. It doesn't happen. Don't fool yourself. Okay? You just divide. So if you divide things to two, you do both of them halfway. Impossible to do parallel processing. Okay. All right. Next. Again, let's go through. Uh, let's go through an interface. Now, this time my interface is for a, any object that can clone itself. What does that mean, to clone yourself? Make a copy out of yourself, right? OK. So how do you clone yourself? You create a new version of yourself, and you return that uh, address of what you created. And then you use it for any reason you want. Are we good? OK. So that's what the clone does. So essentially, this clone is it's just forcing anything that is supposed to be clonable. It's supposed to make a copy of itself and send it out. So let's say I have, I create a, a, a class to encapsulate an integer. And I'm saying an integer is a clonable thing, which means I can create an integer, you know, this easy stuff. And I have a function over here called, good morning. Alarm clock didn't work. <laughs> okay, so now this clonable thing, okay, is cloning, is uh, creating, setting its data. It shows what is its value because as it's an integer. I'm going to put an i value here for whatever reason. Uh, and because it's clonable, it's not supposed to tell what is its type. I'm returning my type as i. You have done this in your project. So I'm an integer. It tells everyone. And the clone, of clone thingy says, return a new integer. Copy from me. I don't need to implement the copy construction because I have all the data within. Right? Are we good? Any questions about this beautiful class of mine? Very simple. Let it digest. We good? OK, next. I'm going to create a float out of this. I'm going to create a float out of this. Exactly the same thing. It has a float. I'm setting it. Well, take a look. It returns an f value. So the functions are not the same. Two different classes, they are just implementing clonable, right? It's the two things that a cloning thing you need to have, it has it. It's the type that is returning, it's the clone, so we, we are good with this. Are we okay with this? There's a problem with this. And by the way, let's have a third one over here. Whatever. I, Came, they couldn't come up with anything. So class whatever is clonable too, and it doesn't have any construct or anything. It's just uh, returns a new version of it, and it says I'm W, which means I'm, I'm whatever, right? It's still a concrete class. So what I can do over here, because these are all clonable objects, what I can do over here is this. creating an array of five clonables, put an integer in one, 
put a float in one, and I keep going like that. Okay? Are we okay with this? So all these guys can clone themselves, right? So what I can do over here is this. I can create, let's say over here, a clonable pointer P, right? Are we okay with this? And then in here I can say, for example, for uh, size T I set to zero, and I less than five, and I plus plus, okay? I'm going to say P is set to uh, C I dot clone, right? So what's happening over here? That clonable P of mine becomes a clone of first an integer, then it's going to be cloned for a float, then it's going to be cloned for an integer, then it's going to be cloned for a float, and it's going to be cloned for whatever, right? This is a tough one, I know, but to give you an example. And the example that I'm giving you, I'm trying to create all the cases for these things to go right or wrong. So now, after doing this, I'm going to say switch. to the type of what is being cloned. Now I can see what is the type. In, in OP345, you'll find out that you don't need to write this function. It is already in C++ library. You can actually see, check and extract the type of a thing later. <laughs> okay, that's you've got to learn in OP345 because we didn't know that. I added my own type, okay? So I can check from this clonable what is the type, correct? The thing is that, so in here I'm going to say case, uh, it is an I, do this, case, it is a float, do this, and by default, do something else. So if it's i, what do I need to do in here? I want to print its value. So what I want to say is something like c out int value is, and in here I want to say p, what is accessible over here? Clone type, correct? How can I call I value in here? Huh? I want you to I want you to pay attention to this. Where did I put that thing? So what I'm saying is this. Just take a look. Give me a second. Hello. So, so what I'm saying is that I have an int and I have a float, right? The pointer that I have over here is of type clonable, therefore it can po point to both of these things. This one has an I value, this one has an F value, correct? But the problem is that P has neither of those. Because it's a pointer of type parent, it doesn't know what the child has. I as a program am 100% sure that at this moment, I am I as a program am 100% sure that I when P type is I, this is an integer object, even if it's held by a pa pa parent's pointer. Right? What we know cast happens from child to parent. I can cast a child to a parent. 
and access the parent's pointers. Well, from parent to child is impossible because you don't know what's sitting at the end, right? Now I know. So how do I cast? If you just cast, uh, if you just cast uh, a parent to a child, compiler won't allow you unless, unless you say, hey, this is a dynamic cast and it's supposed to be casted to an integer pointer. And then you write over here P, which is the thing that you have. Now you can say, I want I value. See that? So when you want to do an upcast, and you're 100% sure that what you're doing is correct, then you can actually do it. So in here, I'm going to say, because it's a float, the float value is, and I'm going to make it to float. So at compiled, this is happening. So at runtime, if you actually do it, some garbage is going to get printed if you are not casting it properly. You have the power to do it, but you have to tell to the compiler, shut up, I know what I'm doing. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Okay? But you can. Question. You can't. They are not relative. They are not the same object. They don't have the same thing. They're two different objects. One of them has many other methods. They are not related. They don't have, when two objects are related to each other, when they're primitive objects and, you know, they don't have any kind of, there's, there's nothing over there to, you know, to, then there's nothing over there to complicate things. Static cast tells you that, hey, these two are the same. Just treat them the same. Don't worry. But they are not. They're completely different. Two different methods. Okay? Yes. Downcast is the other one. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think up. I don't know. Go find out yourself. I don't know which one is what. What I'm saying is that when you want to do a child to a parent, you have no problem. Regular cast will do it because anything a parent has, a child has. But when you're doing the other way, when you are having a, a, a parent and you want to cast it to a child, you have to make sure that this is a parent's pointer pointing to the child. You're not making any boo-boos in here. Very good. And again, only for pointers. Okay, you cannot create a te temporary nameless object out of a child, out of a parent. It, it cannot be done because you don't know how it's going to get created. You have lots of extra stuff. So by doing that, now, and in here I'm going to say see out um, unknown clonable. object. Now when I run this, and obviously after I'm done with all these beautiful stuff, I'm going to delete uh, the, the P, and at the end I can delete all the clonables. Again, I didn't need to write an array like that. I could literally create five arrays, uh, five regular objects that are not dynamic. It would just take long. I could, and then, okay. What I'm saying is that this could have been written like this. Sorry, I'm going to bore you to death, but hey. Uh, let me just compile this first, and I'm, going to, and I'm going to write you the next version for it. So delete P, and then, and I have to delete the other ones. But because it, it has a pure virtual, it has a virtual destructor, everything is good. And then after that, I have to say delete uh, CI. Not with that, with this. Okay, so running this program, it's going to tell that, okay, the value is 10, 20, 30, and the other one that was whatever is, I don't know what it is. I, I cannot, I, I, I don't know what it has. Okay, so this is one dynamic cast. I'm going to write it like this. So where is dynamic cast? Dynamic cast, dynamic cast, dynamic cast. So CDE, dynamic cast. Dynamic 
podcast dot cpp. Okay. So what I was saying is that if I had regular objects over here, which is essentially int a uh, ten. Uh, let's say and b 20, uh, 30 and float c 20.2 oh actually it has to be a float otherwise I've got to get a warning so I'm going to have d equals to 40.4 float like that, flog, okay. I could have had something like this in here. So instead of all this and whatever W, okay, I could have had something like this, address of A, address of C, address of uh, B, address of uh, D and address of W, okay? And then it works the exact same way over here, but I do not need to delete anything because I don't have, oh, I need to delete that one because that's a clone, but for the rest, I don't need to. So essentially, I'm making a clone out of each one and printing them out, but, uh, so, but those things I don't need to delete because they are not dynamic. Okay, so w running this will have the exact same outcome, but uh, now what I'm saying is that not necessarily you need to have everything to be dynamic. Any object can clone itself if it's a clonable object. Are we okay? And this is dynamic cast, and that's the end of OOP 244. Ta-da! Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll go to workshop 10 is this. Oh, you, it's on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, we have 10. It's templates. Yeah. It was in the morning. I'm like, wait a minute. Did I post workshop 10? No, I didn't. So I put it up immediately. Yeah. And there was boo-boos in the project. So the code that I have written to the thing, I, I told you this was a very old thing that I have done in COVID time. So when I converted to something new and changed everything, all the guts of the system, by mistake in my process to get the time of a patient, I casted it to a, to a time. Because in original one, if you casted the patient, the time of the ticket came out, okay? But I removed that one and converted it to a, query that is a dot time that gives you what the time is. And I used the, the, the old one. And because patient could be casted to an integer, I think, and float could, and time could have been created by an integer, it would have actually created time out of the ticket number of the patient. And that was a bug. So I fixed my bug and recaptured everything. The, Nothing is different in what you need to do. So if you have developed something, you're good. Okay? Um, no, it was my, my implementation of the project. Because I always first do the project, then I word it. I never word it, and I ask the students to do it. I, the projects are this big. I cannot just use my imagination. I have to make sure it works, right? So, and the other bug that I had in it was that when I was counting how many people are in lineup, in the original program, everybody would be in the same lineup, which means they didn't have two different times. This one, they have two different ones. So at the old time, I, I uh, just subtracted the ticket number to see how many people are in lineup. Now you have to actually count through a loop and find out how many. I changed that one too. <laughs> And now uh, things are changed. So if you go to version one, and when you are submitting now, it's going to say MS5 one version 
1.0 when you're actually submitting. So you know you are submitting to the right thing. And that's that. So that was the, what? Are we good? Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Uh, any questions? Other questions? So we'll talk about the, 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 the final as you ask. Okay? Yes. No, point, no, uh, the, mm. no, because if it's a reference, then it's going to try to instantiate it. References instantiate. References don't convert pointers. It's always like as if you're looking at something with, without glasses or with glasses. You are not changing, creating new things. You cannot, you cannot cast the reference. There is no reference. We call it a reference. Everything is a reference. So there is, this, uh, there is this illusion of thinking of reference of a new thing. It is not. So literally, so when you are saying integer a, then you are saying integer reference r equals to a. After this is done, r and a are the same. You cannot say which one is the reference, which one is the variable. Therefore, there is no casting for reference. It's always instantiation because they are variables, right? But for pointers, you can. And that's what we did. Okay? Other questions? Suggestions? Objections? Very good. All right. And now, uh, a final test, final ass assessment. The weight is twice as the, much as the, and is 40% of your thing. So, But the good news is that it is designed so you can easily pass it. Okay, if you have a knowledge, if you have done your workshops and you have studied, you can easily, if you have, if you have done your workshops and you have studied, you can easily pass it. If you haven't done your workshops, you didn't study impossible. Okay, so what I mean is studied, I mean like not to put your life on pause and study. Like if you just studied and went for your beer drinking, enjoying your time at the same time, you can easily pass this, okay? But to get A plus is for those people who really know their thing, okay? So you can pass, you can get your B and even A if you have studied firmly. A plus is for those people who really, so that, that we wanted to the, 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 the marks of the students to reflect what they have done, okay? Having so much weight on workshops and things that are not proctored made people either get A or fail. I don't want that. I want a person who gets an A plus, really that A plus shines because no one else can do it. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, if you, can, if you want to just pass, you will just pass with a C. It's fine, you can do it. But get an A, it, you need to be an A student to get an A. And that's what the tests are doing, okay? Uh, so what is the format of the, of the final? You have done it already. Midterm. Identical to it. It's the same thing. OK? You have some concepts. You have some walkthroughs. That is worth around 20% of the test, 20 25% of the test. And then 60%, 80%, 75% of the test is what you code. OK? And the codes are going to be uh, focused on concept, not trick. So I'm not going to ask you to, I don't know, create a, uh, I don't know, sort, of the, sort the array in two different ways at the same time. Although we can. How do we do it? No. If I have an, one array, and I'm going to say sort this array based on first name and last name. So I can print them all in. First name and last name. How can I do that? New, new. You create two arrays of pointers that points to the same array. You sort one array of pointer based on the first. So you don't sort the array at all. You only sort the pointers. Therefore, when you access the arrays using the first array of pointers, it's sorted by name. 
So essentially, you rearrange where they point to. See? That's tricky. <laughs> so I'm not going to give you something like that. I'm going to give you uh, something to see if you have actually done your stuff or not. So these are the things that you have done in your workshops. Anything that you do is, are things that you have done in your workshops and you see in my notes. So those are the questions that you're going to get. Okay? No surprises. Let's put it that way. I may put one surprise to make that 85% 95 to make sure that A pluses are for that, but it's not a big surprise. It's a surprise with 2% in it. Something like that. And again, it's going to be marked in detail, so you're going to see exactly what is the detail of the thing. None of you in this class, uh, when I looked at the thing, mm, submitted the, uh, the, the midterm in a bad way. You all did it properly. You all used the notepad and you put it, everything was good. I don't think anybody over here submitted it incorrectly. In the other class was, was a disaster, but um, not OP244 in IPC. Um, so I like the five different students got zeros from all the programming because they didn't submit it. I couldn't read it. It was just a plain thing coming from up and down. I could. Of course, and all those people, you know, all those people, if you are one of them that you did it and I've missed it, you you know that I remark it, and I'm telling you if you do that in final, it's not going to happen. So please submit your code in a way that I can mark, um, and you'll be fine. Any questions? Preview of what? Oh, no, 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 no. That, I, can't, I would love to do that. Then it makes my life much easier. I could, like, uh, if we did the approach of giving you the question the day before. Then first of all, you're not going to have a reference sheet. So you're going to come. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're not allowed to use anything because you know what the questions are. OK? <laughs> Muscle memory. <laughs> so and secondly, I'm, I am open to do whatever I want. I don't have to limit myself. I can give you the tricky thing that I want to, and you need to you have a like two days to find out what the answer is, learn it, and then come to the class and do the next. Oh, everybody's doing like this. That's exactly what happens. So I can get, if I gave you the, I cannot first do it because one student from other classes is going to come and say, hey, the other people got the questions two days before. How come we didn't? So I want, I, I want appeal. I want to, you know, so I can't do it. So we have to, yeah. So, but uh, it makes the results even worse. So you don't want that preview, trust me. Okay. Um, any questions? Pardon me? Uh, yes, 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 you have a quiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he? It's, the, 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 it's, no, no, no. I'll, I'll give you a time to do it. It's, it's like you got to have three, four days to do it. Whenever you have five extra minutes, in, you can just do it. So. The thing, okay. I mean, I, can you do a walkthrough of this then? Uh, so, yeah, so what happens when you don't do uh, proper uh, dynamic cast? That's the whole idea of constraint casts. The thing you are asking, it has to exist for it to accept it. Otherwise, it won't do it. It's going to give you an error. It's going to tell you, hey, that's not apparent of that one. What are you doing? Right? So, and, and so that's that. So, and when you do it like this, that becomes the, that becomes the. So, it's, and we bring it back to, it has to be a hierarchy of inheritance. Otherwise, your dynamic cast doesn't work. That was a perfect question, actually. That was a good question to ask. <laughs> Any other question? Yes, 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 yes. I'll tell you what is it going to be on. The quiz is all concept. Maybe a couple of walkthroughs and, and your code to write. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's questions. That, questions are all from the notes. It's just, just read the notes, link that I send you, read the notes, and come and do it. That's all. Okay? Anything else? I keep pausing this. Any question one? Any question two? Thank you very much for uh, OP244.